Hello everyone. Today I am starting this new video series where I will start building a real world application from scratch using .NET MAUI. This will be as I said a real world application. It will be practical, it will be functional and it will be good looking. Consider this as second installment of the Beyond Monkeys uh, video series which I created a couple of months back. If you remember or for those of you who are not aware, I started a series where I built a real world YouTube player application from scratch using .NET MAUI. I will link this in the description below. I would highly suggest and recommend that you watch this series because some of the concepts that we will be using in this series as well, they have been described at least in the first two or three parts of the older series. So I'm conveniently calling this application or this new series as Beyond Monkeys 2. So what are we going to do in this series? Many of the .NET and especially Xamarin and Mavi developers must be aware of this website called snippets.dev. This is an amazing website which has been developed by uh, two developers from Netherlands. You may already know them, uh, Gerald, who is actively participating in .NET MAUI development. He's part of the .NET MAUI team. He's also an active member of the .NET uh, community toolkit team. You may have uh, you know, seen a lot of videos introducing new .NET MAUI features and before that Xamarin features on his YouTube channel. Uh, the other person or his partner is Steven. He is also from the Netherlands. Uh, he used to be a very, very active a member of Xamarin community. You may remember him from a gem of a component or a library called Pancake View. Almost every Xamarin application made use of that component in one way or the other. I'm not sure uh, what happened to Steven. He has been quite dormant for, for some time now. Even on Twitter, I do not see anything from him on Xamarin or Mavi at all. But regardless, this is a wonderful site wherein developers can go, Developer, developers like you and me, we can go and we can submit our contributions and we can help other developers and community to learn from what we have made. So as an example, you can see over here, someone has made a UI clone for WhatsApp. So that has been listed over here. You come you can see all the different contributions from the community. For example, this is the one I was talking about, which is the Beyond Monkeys series one. If we click on this, you can see some description about this, what all platforms it is supported on, a link to uh, the GitHub repo and some additional screenshots if they are available. So you can go to the GitHub repo and you can uh, download the code, you can learn from contributions from different developers. So this is what we are going to build. Now imagine at the moment this is currently a website and it is very fitting indeed that since this is only talking about mobile application development, be it using Xamarin platform or .NET MAUI, this ideally should be a mobile application. So this is what we will be building from scratch and we will try to make it as good looking as possible. So first thing first, as I mentioned, I would highly recommend that you go and watch at least the first two or three parts of my previous uh, building real world Mavi application series, because most of the concepts that we will be applying over here in this series as well, or this application, they have been discussed in details in that series. I'm not going to repeat most of the things over there. And additionally, this time around, I will not be sharing the source code of the application that we will be building. I will be building this application step by step live, taking no shortcuts. Everything will be documented in the series. So this time around, I want you to not just take the code from GitHub repo and just, you know, run it as such. I want you to follow along during all the videos, understand the concepts and practice yourself. 
that is the thinking this time okay so with that let's get started now if you remember from the previous series as well the very first thing i said before we even start on visual studio what we should do we should document the requirements or document the functionality that we are going to implement in this application so for this purpose i am going to go and document all the requirements now luckily what i am going to do i am going to show you first of all up front how the application is going to look like on the mobile and then we will document the requirements from there of course when i did it i went through a huge process of thinking through everything and documenting but this time around we can have a look at the running application so this is the running application this is what we will be building exactly nothing different all the same features and we will be coding it from scratch so this is the application so you can see we have got uh, some mavi uh, community submissions we have got some xamarin submissions you can filter and so on so these are all the different functionalities you can click on any particular uh, snippet and it will take you to the details page and then you can see more information including the screenshots you can go directly to the github repo and so on and you can even share with someone so these are all the different functionalities that we want to build but before we start building there are three things that we should be considering the very first thing obviously you should be thinking about is what is the functionality of your application if i can spell it correctly okay it is not liking it the second thing is once you have defined the functionality you also need to know where your data is going to come from how are you going to source the data to display in your application and the last is the user interface and the user experience part it is not just the screen design it is also the experience okay so we will start from the user interface and the user experience first and then we will go to data and to functionality because it's easier for me to explain in this video and also it is the ui ux part is the shortest one data will take a little bit of more time and functionality definitely will take much more time for discussion so let's start with the user interface so when i started working on this i was thinking about the traditional way of doing things and that's how i started working i can even show you i i tweeted about it uh, a while back as well this is what i started building and this is the kind of interface i was building upon which is the standard collection view uh, two column grid view inside it it has all the snippets you click on it it will open up and, and so on uh, of course at that point in time i did face lot of issues uh, with collection view i tried to reach to the dotnet mavi team for support as well unfortunately i was not able to get help on this so i was almost about to abandon this idea of building this application when i stumbled upon another application uh, it's an android application basically you may have heard of it especially for those who are using android phones i saw this application in one of the uh, you know a feature video where they were talking about you know this nice application to talk about your uh, home set designs or home home screen designs very similar to what we are doing with uh, uh, snippets mobile application over here so people they can customize their android screens uh, many of the iphone developers will know or iphone users will know that there is no customization on iphone side but on android you can customize your screen a lot so this is the design uh, for the application that this developer sam backman backman have uh, come up with for his application called palette so he is showing list of all these designs in a carousel view you can filter on the categories there are some other filters you can submit your uh, designs and so on so something very sim and and then when you click on something it will pop up a window like this details window wherein you can see a bigger image as well as some setup details and information to download so this is this is the application that this developer had built and this is what actually inspired me as well 
so I started working on it using uh, carousel view this application and uh, there are a lot of limitations and issues with carousel view as well and for some of you who may remember in the Xamarin world uh, I hope I'm pronouncing his name right Andrea he had built a wonderful control called card view and he recently ported a version of it it is still in the beta version I think it's in 0 0.2 or 0 0.3 version and by the time it was in 0 0.1 uh, when I when I started looking at it so he had ported that to dotnet Maui and I immediately jump onto it and I started using that and that is the control we will be using in our application as well so that is for the let me close some of them so that is for the user interface and the user experience I will come to it when we when we go to the functionality and when I show you the application uh, in depth let's talk about data now for this application to work we need to have this data so currently I told you on this website there is a method uh, if you click on how to contribute you can see what are the what is the method so uh, the developers for this website or this project they have uh, specified step by step instructions on how to add yourself as an author how to add the details of your uh, uh, project as a snippet and then you have to submit it as a PR to their github repo so their github repo is available over here it's github.com uh, github.com slash snippet step slash snippets and you have to go and you have to submit a PR over here and then once it is approved then it will be displayed automatically on this website so this is this is the process but all this information is currently available in this repo so how are we going to show this onto our application now the ideal way would be uh, if you are looking from a solution version solution architecture perspective ideally what this website or this application should do this web application it should also expose some API or rest endpoints wherein we can connect to this data set fetch the information and display it on the screen unfortunately this functionality is not available on this website so how do we how do we get this data out of this and have it available for our application uh, that is our mobile application so to start with I reached out to the to one of the developers of uh, this project snippets and I told him that this is what I want to do is there a way uh, you can help me in getting this data out as an API I did not get any positive response so in fact what I did I said okay let me do something about it so I started looking at the source code for for this snippet web application how it is built how data is stored and in fact I submitted a PR to add the API capabilities to this website itself and there were a couple of bugs as well uh, in, in uh, especially in the sorting and and getting the github stars so that is also something that I fixed as part of this pull request so I submitted this somewhere in uh, yeah end of end of September so I built this whole thing I built this APIs and this is how you will call these APIs for example uh, snippet step slash API version 1 snippet slash latest top by category number one or five or or uh, uh, you know all the snippets by a particular author and so on so I actually built this whole thing and I submitted this PR along with fixing the bugs and there seemed to be no response from the from the developer of of this repo I even reached out to him on github or oh, sorry not github Twitter multiple times and let me let me put it this way that I got cold shoulders and uh, I was very very disappointed so I I thought okay let's leave it I cancelled this PR I, I closed the PR after one month and I decided to take the matters in my own hand so instead what I did later on is I built my own 
API backend. And I will talk about this in part two of this series where I will be storing the data in a SQL Server database somewhere on your uh, on the web or wherever you want it to be and build another API on API uh, front end on top of that which will expose this data and it will present it to the mobile application. So we will cover that, we will build that ourselves. So coming back to the functionality, let me actually do something, let me put this side by side so that we can start seeing this and we can start typing. So what are the functionalities? So for the functionality, we want to have a, definitely, let's call it a home page or a dashboard page. Okay, so we have got a dashboard page. Let me. Let's convert this to a task dashboard page. Now in this dashboard page, what are we going to have? So the very first thing, obviously we want a carousel of all the snippets. This is something that we will come and visit a little bit later in more details. What other functionality we want to have? So we want to have the functionality to be able to uh, say right now, sort it by a particular platform. Let's say if you want to see only Mavi, uh, Mavi uh, snippets, we can sort it by Mavi. Or if you want only Xamarin, we can see only Xamarin snippets. If you want to see everything, we can click on the all and we will be able to see mix and match. So let's say ability to or filter by SDK, SDK or platform. So platform being Xamarin or Mavi. We should be able to search for something specific. Let's say I want everything to do with, uh, okay, let's talk about our YouTube one. So if I click on, type on tube, press enter, or if I search, click on this, it only shows me one snippet, which is the uh, YouTube player. And we should also have the ability to clear our search. So we click on this cross, it will take us back to everything. So search by, name or title slash description and we also need to have the ability to clear the search this is something which uh, david ottenow actually asked me that it is very inconvenient if i have typed in tube and now if i want to go back i have to come back click which is not very convenient so we need to have this clear all functionality as well so we have the search, we have filter, we have the carousel view. Then we would have the ability to sort the snippets. So when we click on it, a bottom she sheet opens up and here you can sort by all popular. So this is popular. This has got 992 stars. This is from Sync Fusion. This one has 287 stars and so on. If you click by latest. So these are the latest, these are the ones which have the latest updates on the GitHub repos. So even though it has 33 stars, this one has the latest update on GitHub. This one has you know, the second latest and so on. Or you can say, randomize it, surprise me, show me something, sort it by your own, you know, the way you want. So it is sorting it in, in any order that it wants. It is showing you information. If you again click on surprise me, it will again sort it this time, again, a different order altogether. So you can see this e-commerce web design which was earlier number one of 122, it has now become 115. If I again click on surprise me, so yeah, so this is temperature control. This was earlier number 100. Now it has come to the top. So we are going to sort option, basically sort option by latest, top and uh, random. Another option that we need to have, which I have not implemented and I will not implement, but just to give you an idea, let me go back to the website. So here on the website, you see there are some categories. In fact, even if I go to one of the, let's, let's look at this one. This snippet, Yufuk Sahin, uh, this is the name of the developer and it is called Chased Home User Interface Design. And it is tagged to dashboard, to list, 
to log in, to navigator, search, sign up, photos, and so on. So these are all of them. If I click on just dashboard, you can see these are all the snippets which are tagged to the dashboard tag. So we, we should also be having an option to, let me go back, to filter by categories. So I have not implemented this. I will leave that as an exercise for you. I will show you when I code, I will lay out the foundation for this, but the user interface part, I will leave it to you. So the best way would be that you show a list of all the categories over here, which are listed over here on the side, which is about activity, uh, activity feeds, app clones, data grids, errors, filters, and so on. You display this, you click on anything, it will automatically filter you or show you only the snippets for that particular category. So filter by category option. So we will, I'll put it, this is not to be implemented. I will leave that to you to implement. Then at the bottom, before I come to this in more details, uh, at the bottom we have this uh, a menu bottom bar where we will have three links. So the links can be anything. In fact, I would say at least two of these links should be there. One is the plus icon, the add link. When you click on this, I am just giving it, I will give it a header saying add new snippet. I will not do it. You should, you should try building it yourself. So what should I actually come is when you click on it, if you go to the website and you see how to contribute page, these are the details you see. How can you submit your contribution to this website? So you should whatever is here on this page, you should display it in a nice way on this particular page. Similarly, if I click on the info or the about page, it should open up another page. Again, I'm not going to implement it. I'm going to leave it to you. Let's call it about snippets. Ideally, what you should be doing over here, you should be giving full credit to this website, uh, you know, specifying information that, uh, you know, uh, Steven and Gerald they have contributed building this website and we are just taking their data and displaying it. You should thank them, thank the developers and so on. So this is what should happen. And then the third option, I can leave it uh, up to you how you want to do this. This can be a settings page if you want to implement some settings. Maybe if you want to implement, uh, say, uh, theming in your application, dark mode, uh, light mode. So maybe it can be a settings page where you can, you can have uh, you know option to switch between uh, dark mode, light mode. Uh, you can have an option to default, uh, say, uh, the sort option, uh, maybe some of the some of the other things you can have. So in the menu bottom bar, we are going to have, say, add snippet, uh, about snippets, and say settings, or or alternatively, you can also have say favorites. Uh, let's actually rather do it over here. So let's call it phase two. So in phase two, you can also do a lot of these things. So for the phase two, what are we going to do? Ideally, we should have an option, uh, at least what I can think of is uh, mark as favorite. Okay, so something like maybe if, if I go to this particular one and I want to mark this as my favorite, I want to keep coming back to this later. So maybe we can give an icon over here to mark it as favorite and we can store this information locally on the device using SQLite. And then maybe the setting can be replaced with a favorites page. So whatever you have favorited, if you click on that particular page, it will show you those favorites. That is one thing you can do. Uh, another option which I can think of is maybe have something like a local notifications. Uh, as in this application should be running only uh, let's say every 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 day it should check if there are new sub uh, snippets which have been submitted on this website so maybe submit or or send a push notification to the user on the mobile telling them okay uh, uh, snippet xyz has been published uh, with this many stars please check it out and when you click on that push notification it can directly take you to the application wi with this kind of page and you can uh, you can see the details. So local push notifications. Uh, some of the other non-functional requirements that we will also add over here is, I am just going to mention them uh, separately, is ability to cache data. 
So right now, let me show you if I close the application, if I open the application, you notice that the application will open up immediately and it is not fetching the data from internet again. Everything is available locally. You click on it, the information is available locally. So that is something we will be, we will be building as part of our application. So let's talk about the carousel view. Now, this is interesting. So what are we going to display in this carousel view? There are four components definitely we can think about. So one is over here, the number of stars. So we should display the number of stars. Okay, we should display, of course, the, the image of the application. Let's call it image of the snippet. So in this case, it's a scientific calculator. So it, it shows you a nice image of the calculator. And again, with a mobile device frame, let's put it that way. Let's call it nice for now. I will explain what nice is. We are talking about a subscription plan. It is showing you a screenshot. So image slash screenshot. We need to display the title of the snippet and the platform. So title of the snippet and the platform. Platform being uh, whether it is built using Xamarin or it is built using .NET MAUI. Another thing that I have done, you may have noticed over here from the colors and also here. So anything which is Xamarin, I am displaying it in uh, orangish tint. Anything which is .NET MAUI, I am showing it in the purplish or bluish tint. Now one thing to note, it is not one solid color. It is actually a gradient going all the way from here to there, but with very, very subtle difference. So you can hardly make it out, but this is a gradient which is going from top left to bottom right. So what we also need is a color coding or color distinction. Color distinction. Based on the platform. So this is the feature of this. Now what else we are going to do? Now one of the things you will notice, I don't know if you notice, right now it is showing you the full image and also the main item, the current which is being highlighted, the current snippet, it is almost full size and all the others are slightly faded on the left and right and they are smaller size. So let's say, say UI requirements let's have ui requirements and uh, says let's put it feature or highlighted highlight on current snippet okay anything else is faded out and it is smaller now uh, make a note when we transition from one snippet to another so you see the one on the right, the Maui scientific calculator, it is shrinking and shrinking and shrinking. Whereas the one which is coming in the view, that is becoming bigger and bigger and bigger. You notice? Again, if I do that, see it is shrinking and the one which is coming into the view, that is becoming bigger. If I do the same thing, other side, same thing happens. Right. So uh, I don't know how to put this, maybe something like a parallax view on uh, screenshots while swiping. This is something we will be implementing. Another thing, in fact, a couple of things that I want to show you, which you will not be able to see because I told you we are caching the data. So let me kill the application. Let me start it again. You will not see anything because once the application starts, everything is there but here you can see something okay this one the image is not available let me actually do something let me uninstall the application and i will show you what do i mean there are a couple of things i want to highlight which we will be implementing so i'm going to delete this and i'm going to run this using visual studio again so i'm just compiling it uh, on my other screen very soon it will be deployed so yeah now the application has been deployed and it is coming up just notice what happens you see because it is fetching data from the internet it takes some time which is very obvious it is hitting my server this api that we will build the one i was talking about that api is going to be hosted on my 
web server on the internet and it takes a few milliseconds to get the data and it is very good if you can present some visual feedback to the user that your data is being extracted so we will be using loti for this let me let me kill this let me close this and let me run this application again this time around since i have already cached this that's what we were talking about data caching it is not hitting my server so maybe we can build a logic that every four hours six hours eight hours or once a day uh, it should go fetch the latest data otherwise always cache the data locally and display it on the screen so we can go back here and some other uh, i'm just going to put it over here just as an option on the dashboard screen which is the uh, loading indicator for web requests using lottie so we will be using lottie animations now another thing you will notice let me just swipe so you see if i go right now all the images are loaded but you see what is happening over here this image is still being loaded from the internet for those of you who are working with uh, who have been working with xamarin there was a nice library called ff ff image loading which allowed you to first of all cache the images all right cache the images as well as while it was loading an image or it was waiting for the image to be downloaded you can display a placeholder okay now unfortunately that library is not available in dotnet maui so instead what we will be doing i and especially in maui it is it is not available out of the box as well the only thing which is available for you is caching what i mean by caching is let me actually close this application and show you so you can decide to cache an image for a certain amount of time be it one minute one hour one day one month one year whatever that period is and during that cached validity period it will never go and fetch the image from the internet again so you can see all the images have already been loaded they are not being asked to be displayed from the internet this image was never displayed before so it is displaying it so you can see chick and paddy it took took a while now if i relaunch the application this chick and paddy it will be served from the local cache it will not be displayed from the internet so you can see over here if i go for something else yeah over here it will also loading i want to see something which is a bit bigger yeah band tracker you see this is a big image and i don't know if you notice it is not just showing a placeholder it was showing a pulsating or a beating screen showing that something is happening you see over here it is fading in fading out fading in fading out saying guys i am doing something so this is another one of the big large images so this this one takes a really long time i noticed so give it a while it will download and then once the image is loaded it will display if we don't do this what will happen is the default mavi way you start the application it will show up uh, you know as blank there will be nothing over here and then suddenly boom the image will come up whereas here you will notice the image even the image fades in slowly so you can see that nice effect so either it is having some issue downloading this image or there is something else let's go to some other one yeah see, this is the one which i have submitted so it is downloading the image and you see it it faded with a bit of a slight animation it is it is not sudden jerk that you see by default right so this is the example now if i go to the same thing by the way i have done for uh, other places and this one by uh, this this image we will be making when when i call this a nice a nice image screenshot we will make this reusable and we will be using it again and again in different places in the same application so let me show you if i go if i click on anything okay before i before i forget uh, we were talking about one thing which is uh yeah, loading indicator and what did we want to do we wanted to have a loading effect for images with caching so this is this is what i meant so now if i go inside to any of this so this is where you can see so this is the second page 
and of course what we want to do is UI requirements and uh, maybe uh, navigate to details page for the snippet and what do we have in the details page so this is the dashboard page and now we have the details page So what are we going to have in the details page? In the details page, something very similar. We are going to have, you know, show the SDK. I'm not going to write down everything. I'm going to explain very, you know, uh, quickly. So we are going to write down the platform again using the same color, the number of stars, GitHub stars. In fact, let, let's write it down. So platform, GitHub stars, okay. And the image, the main image. So you remember I was saying this is a reusable frame or control that I have created. So this is resembling very much, you know, close to a mobile with a frame and inside is the actual image of the or the screenshot of the snippet. So we have the uh, main screenshot. Okay, we have the main screenshot. And I do not know if you can notice over here, there are two sections. The first one is in this particular case, a light purple and or light blue and the bottom one is dark blue if i go back you remember i was telling you there is a gradient over here going from one color to another color these are the colors that i am displaying over there similarly if i go to another one which is a xamarin uh, 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 snippet here you can see the bottom one is dark orangish or peachish and the the top one is light peach color this is again using the same concept that we have over here. So, so, so it's using gradient colors. So what we want to do is we want to have uh, two different colors. This is again part of the UI on the for sections just to make it look nice. Then below that I'm showing which all platforms it is supporting. So which all run times it is supporting runtime support so this particular application the one that i have built and i submitted to github i'm only supporting apple and android you may find some which is supporting windows as well some uh, which is supporting uh, mac os the name of the author so this is my name in this particular case description of the snippet which is over here the the snippet shows planners mobile app ui etc etc all the categories that this application or this snippet belongs to so let's call it categories pill uh, link to github so link to the github page if i click on this link to the github repo it will open up if you have the github application installed it will take you using the github application otherwise it will open it up in the browser and then below that I have all the other images which are submitted for this snippet as well. So we had this main snippet or the main screenshot this one and then I have submitted two additional screenshots. So let's call them additional screenshots and they should only display if they are available if not they should not. Another thing now you will notice is I have again put in this nice parallax effect you, you see over here by default when you start it shows you the image on the main screenshot in full screen and the information below. Now, as you keep on scrolling, if I scroll, you see, it is shrinking it to a certain extent and then it shows you in a nice parallax effect. So let's put that over here as well, parallax effect. And lastly, I have implemented this share functionality. Let's say if you like this, Maybe you want to let me let me just save it as reminders. So you want to uh, you know send it by WhatsApp or Twitter or tweet about it or anything. You can just say, hey, I found this amazing snippet. Uh, check this out and so on. So this is the share functionality. Okay. Now let's go back and let's choose something else just to show you. Yeah, the Places app finally opened up. Let's click on the band tracker again you see here I'm doing the same concept if it is loading the images while the images are being loaded 
I am I am showing them with a with this pulsating effect so this image came up quickly from the internet whereas this one is taking a while so again it is fetching the image from the internet and you can see this nice effect once it is loaded it will be displayed with this subtle fade animation now if I go back to something which I already looked at say band tracker if I go this time around the images are already there they are not being fetched so you do not see that effect so yeah this is this is the application that we will be building and I again want to emphasize I will not be sharing the source code for this application I will be building this whole thing step by step step by step I will be building this over the course of around 8 to 10 videos so each video being anywhere from 40 minutes to one hour long so please follow along there will be some uh, assets which I will definitely share on my github uh, uh, repo and I will link to that so uh, please uh, you are free to download those and use those in your application but other than that I would also recommend that you please have a look at the let's go back to so please have a look at this building real world dotnet mavi application series it's i think nine or ten parts yes ten parts where we are building this uh, uh, youtube player application in details again starting from scratch as scratch as going and documenting the requirements uh, you know building the actual framework and whatever we had put in all the effort that we put in there at that time to build the framework we will be reusing that in this application and I am not going to uh, to explain the same thing again in fact let me show you this application in little bit uh, more details uh, sorry let me so the code for this is also available On my github so you can go and download the code so this is the actual application that we built with all this functionality you know real youtube api connections ability to search for videos sharing of the videos infinite scrolling video details playing the video downloading the video and if you want to see this in action how it is running so this is this is the application that we built again the full source code is available and over the course of 10 10 videos on YouTube I am showing you how to build this thing step by step the same thing I'll be doing for the for this application as well the one we have for the snippets so yeah this is that's it for today this is the introduction so uh, in the next part we will start building the backend API for our application because before we start building on the application we need to have the data available and as I said unfortunately this PR there was no response from the developer or I would want to you know say it out loud cold shoulder from the developer I did all the hard work submitted even fixed a couple of bugs and added the API functionality but there was a cold shoulder so I was I had to to you know go the other route so I will build the same thing again using web apis so stay tuned for that so signing off now see you next time